Yes. So here I have my Photoshop file. And at the end, what I did is I merged it all into one layer, right? And by doing that, and I will show that again, because that's an important step once you're happy with how all of your stacked layers are arranged, right? So once you're done kind of erasing, skewing, editing, transforming, warping, all of these, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this layer, delete this. Um, notice that if you have the background turned on and your background is just what the default background was for the file, it's just solid white, and you have all of these set to multiply, it doesn't even matter which order they're in because multiply is, is, is as though the layers are printed on transparency. So anything darker underneath is going to come through. Once you're happy with that, what I want you to do is turn off your background layer. And you'll see that even though we said multiply, we have all these white pixels still in there, right? And ultimately, in order to do some of the coloring options we want, and in order to get this to be a free floating cutout of just the line art, right? We want just black pixels. Instead of having to go into each layer individually and get rid of the white, we're gonna combine all of these layers together. So this is a tricky thing. And what's funny is I've never actually seen this in any Photoshop tutorial or any Photoshop guide. It's something I discovered at some point and it's a godsend. And, but I'm sure a lot of people have known about it for a long time. So how can you mess with layers, right? You can move them around individually this way. We'll learn more and more methods, but we have these layer options at the top. And these layer options at the top the ones we'll use for the most, the most often are down here, the merge down, the merge visible, and the flatten image. Now these are all fairly self-explanatory, right? So if I say flatten image, that takes no matter how many layers I have, even layers that are turned off, and it turns it into one layer, which does the job, right? But now I have black and white pixels all on one layer, and it's a background layer. The problem is it doesn't let me go back and tweak any of those work files, right? So we don't wanna do that with our PSD files. We want our PSD files always to be messy with lots of process in it. We only flatten our image when we are ready to print it. And we will call that an archive file. And we'll save that as a TIFF instead of a PSD to save memory and, and all kinds of things. So I'm gonna undo that with Command Z. And instead, I'm gonna look at some of the other layer options. Merge down, is self-explanatory. That takes whatever layer you're on and it merges the layer with the one underneath it. So we actually don't use that too, too much because it's really specific. But this one, merge visible, we're gonna use all the time. So merge visible means if I only have, um, let's see, the top three layers showing and I'm selecting on one of the layers that's showing with the eyeball, if I say layer merge visible, it will merge those three layers into one layer. Okay, so here's the trick. I wanna turn on, turn on every layer except my background. And I'm going to say layer merge visible, but before I click it, because if I click it, this is what happens, right? And then I, I lose all my individual layers. So before I click it, I'm gonna hold down option. So this is called option merge visible. So if I go to layer, hold down option, and then click merge visible, a beautiful thing happens. It makes a layer that is everything together, but it also leaves all the other layers. So you can understand how incredibly useful that is. Right. Say it again. They, they should be unlocked and they need to be visible in order to work for merge visible. So the background layer I am not showing is visible. So then what you can do is turn off all of those building layers, right? So you just have the merged layer and it will show all the whites that remain, right? Now we are able to select the white and delete it. And we do that with not the lasso tool. You know, it would take forever to just circle all the white and delete it. 
So instead we wanna use the tool underneath the lasso tool. It's in a drawer. It's called the magic wand tool. We're gonna to use this tool an awful lot too in compositing. So what the magic wand does, and you can see always the tool options at the top. This, the default standard for tolerance is 32. So unless you have reasons to change it, that's a good number to put in there. And it makes a big difference. That says how sensitive the wand is. What the wand does is it selects pixels that are similar to each other, right? So with white pixels, it's pretty easy. We want to do it with a tolerance of 32. And if I check contiguous, that means that the pixels have to be similar to each other and they have to be touching. So if I do that and I click, you'll notice it will only select the ones on the outside because those are all similar to each other and they're touching. But what I want for this is I want to get rid of all the white everywhere on this layer. So I'm going to uncheck contiguous and then click on the white and then hit delete. So now what we see is for the first time with this project, black line art on a checkerboard, right? And that means there are no white pixels. There are only whatever was left besides white pixels. And that doesn't mean there's only uh, black pixels. You'll notice there's also gray pixels. It depends on the scans that we're using. Okay, now to, to keep this going, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the problems with this, right? So this would be just like Arturo Herrera taking a big sheet of black paper and cutting out his design. But then I'm gonna create a new background. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm going to say edit fill and I'm going to fill it with black. Okay. So the problem with black only shapes is when you show black on black, <laughs> you know, all I can see are the faint gray outlines that remain, right? So this is what's nice about cutting it out in Photoshop. What I can do is I can double click on the layer part of my merged layer and I will get what are called the layer styles. And layer styles are tremendously helpful. So if I turn on a black background, and maybe I'll make it easier for you to see, I'll, I'll make this a gray background instead. And this is what we'll do when we do t-shirt designs or spot illustrations or logos. We wanna see how it looks on white, we wanna see how it looks on gray, we wanna see how it looks on black. So right now our design, I like it, doesn't look good on black. So how can I make it work on all those backgrounds? So if I double click on the layer itself, I go to layer styles and just the very simple thing I'm gonna suggest you do is click on stroke, okay? Then go to your stroke options. Stroke's gonna do a few things. So if I take it all the way down to, to zero and I zoom in, I'll be able to show you what stroke does. So right now it's a one pixel stroke set to go on the outside of the pixels in that layer. So it's basically just outlining everything with one pixel. And I get to pick the color and I want you to pick the color white, right? This is what's called an offset. It, it offsets whatever your design is with the background. It's like putting a mat around your, your image. Now, if I keep it on outside, I could also try inside, right? And that will narrow it so that the white stripe is actually on the inside. But then if I grow it, you'll see that it will eventually just fill my image with white. And if I do center, it will kind of split the difference for the stroke. What I'll usually do is outside, and then I'll play with the number of pixels until it feels like it kind of balances with the line art. Now, what I like about stroke at this stage in your compositing is it's really hard to perfectly erase all the little debris from these files. So stroke does a good job of showing you even when you have just one pixel out of place. And this is the time when it's really easy to just delete those because they're all on one layer. And to delete them, I don't need to delete all the white. The white is generated from the stroke. I just need to delete that one little black pixel that remains. So this is a way to kind of spot check and clean up your work. And what's really maddening in compositing and using raster-based work and this will make more sense when we get more practice, but it will show a full 100% opaque stroke around a pixel that's 0% opacity. So even if you use like the eraser, but you have it on a gradient, 
and you've erased it until you can't see it anymore, the pixel's still there to the computer, right? Until you actually select it and delete it. So this is a way to, to clean up kind of that noise. And it, it gives you a chance to kind of do full edits, you know, all over to your image. And if this were a portfolio piece, we'd really pay attention to it before we print it. So we're not surprised when we get our printout that there's little black spots on the edges. Right? But this is an exercise. I don't need to go around and just perfect everything. But I want to get the glaring, the glaring issues. Now notice the stroke is just as bumpy <laughs> as your line art, right? So it's pretty dynamic. So there's just a few more I'm going to delete. But that looks pretty good. Now, so the beauty of having that stroke is this is what it looks like on white. Looks the same, right? This is how it looks on gray. Let's see how it will look on black. And so they look different on each, but it shows my design clearly, even just as a black and white design. So if I'm done at this point, I'm happy with my, my black cartoon jumble. Notice that my layer at the top, it has an effect line and now it has a stroke. Because when you do a layer style, you can choose to turn it on and off. You can even choose to, to play with its opacity and do other things. I'm going to duplicate this using Command J. We're going to learn that um, in a little bit and show you a different effect I might want to use instead of stroke. So if I double click it and I turn off the stroke, the other one I might say that you can experiment with depending on your design to offset it is what's called outer glow. Now outer glow is like a stroke, except it's soft edged. And it's not going to be as bumpy as your line art. And you can set the opacity. You can set the amount of noise, which can be really nice, especially for things like t-shirt designs or logo designs. So you can make it look really smooth. And you can decide, decide how big it is and how much it spreads out. So this looks a lot like a stroke, but notice how soft edged it is and how much smoother it is. So this is called outer glow. And you get to decide what you think best suits your design. But I want everyone in the class to put some sort of white offset behind their cartoon jumble so that it shows, shows clearly no matter what the background is behind it. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. I'll go ahead and keep that. And again, you set the color just by clicking on it and going up to the very upper left-hand corner to get to pure white. So I have two options, right? I have this option and I have this option. And I think I like this one more. But it shows me one really, really tiny little gray pixel I want to delete. All right. So how do we finish it off now? How do we submit it if we're just happy with it not being colored, just being black? I'm going to turn off the background layer. Leave on the layer that has the offset I like. And now I'm going to save it, file save, as a PSD with all these different layers. It has all the options built in. And then I'm going to save it again. So file save as. When you want to save, save as a different format, save with a different name, we always do file save as. And where do we always save to when we make a new file? Not to our folder, but to the desktop. So I'm going to hit Command D so that it will navigate this to the desktop. And I'm going to go down to Format. And I do not want this to be a Photoshop format. I want this to be, like it says up on the board, a PNG format. PNG is an online file format. It compresses the image, takes up a lot less space. It allows us to put it up to PhotoBucket but it also supports transparency. So it won't automatically fill a rectangle with white, right? It will be a free floating image. And then you just hit save. And then we're gonna keep all the defaults. 